Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. Now that I've noticed page 205, page 205, and after this selection, Brother Melvin Spencer Jr. will bring the lesson for the evening. It's a convenient party to act as you stand at this time. You're saying 205 at the beginning of the third stanza, you may take your seat. At the beginning of the third stanza of 205, you may take your seat. This life is filled with sorrow and trouble here below. We often made to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation, this life must bring to you. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this very Heavy love. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we know you travel the road to Jericho and help the lonely pilgrim. The Bible tells me so. When earthly friends forsake us and all the world seems blue. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this very world. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy love. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. They say that many trials will come to make us own. That God will walk together to them for us alone. In every sad condition to lead us safely through. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. We need someone to guide us and share our heavy love. We need someone to love us and tell us what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend day. To be able to come back to worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes, sir. You know, I, I 
love it when we come back to evening worship and don't have anyone to partake of the communion. <laughs> some of y'all know where I'm going with this and some of y'all don't. You sit back and relax. It is a wonderful, wonderful Lord's Day. Amen. Let's go ahead, uh, Brother Butch, and let's sing him 274 anyway, 274A. 274A? Yeah, if you don't mind. So that we can really understand how, how much Jesus really and truly do love us. Amen. I'll pre-stand this. <clears throat> Jesus loves me, I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. who he is. Spiritual blessings are in Christ. Yes, the Bible tells us that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. But spiritual blessings are in Christ and, and they come from the heavenly realm. God gives us the things in which we need things in which to be able to glorify him and to be able to appreciate this life and to be able to continue to live this life that one day that we will be able to see him and worship him knowing that when we talk about spiritual blessings and you can go and you read through Ephesians chapter 1 things that come from God in, in some senses that we look at these things and we talk about these things it's in order for us to, to grow to, to become the people that he can truly say and acknowledge that he loves us because of our obedience. Now God owes us nothing. You know, there's so many people that think that they should have this or they should have that for one reason or another, but God owes us nothing. Amen. The thing that we need to think about and consider is this, that when God says it, that we can count it as done. Amen. When he tells us that heaven 
can be our home, that we can rest assured that heaven can be our home. But we have to do what we know to do in order to get there. Someone give you a map and they have already highlighted the place in which you need to go. It's up to you to follow that highlighted path. Amen. Do not get off and say, I'm going to go this way. Because when you get off and go that way, you may not get there. I want to say you may not get there. You know. You may know something that the next man don't know. But when you get off the path that God has put us on according to his word, there's no other way. You are going to be lost. Going to be lost. When we were studying the word of God to become one of his children, I know that there's somebody somewhere saying, why does it have to be that way? As the little children would ask the question in class, why did a man have to die? There was no other way for us to have salvation except for that man to die. And we're glad that he did. Amen. You know, it's not something that we jump up and down and shout about and say, we need somebody else to die. Because I've messed up. No, Jesus has already died. Amen. The only one that could take away the sins of the world. What man has done. So we look and we talk about spiritual blessings. God's desire is to bless his children. That's his desire, to bless his children. You know, we want our children to have the best in life. You know, I knew a lady that had a will. Man, every time her children messed up, she went and changed her will. She got even to the point where she didn't want to write it down. She, she wanted it to be recorded. This is what I want my will to be changed to because my sons are not doing what they need to do. It was her right. Everything she had was hers. She was still living. She had every right to change her will. And some people got upset about that. Why did she take them out of her will? Because it was hers. Amen. It was hers. God does not take us out of his will. Amen. He wants us to do his will mm -hmm. in order for us to get the things in which he has promised unto us. So we look first in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1. You know, we were, we were in class the other day. And, and, and when I say class, I'm, talking, I'm not necessarily talking about class here. Uh, we go down to the jail and we have class there. And I... I asked an individual in reference to what happened in the beginning. And he's the first one that I, I've, I've ever asked that question to that, that jumped to John 1 1 instead of Genesis 1 1. I was like, wow. I, and I said, Let, let's talk about that just for a little while then. I appreciate his answer, but we were going to Genesis 1 1, but when he mentioned John 1 1, I was like, yes. So let's start there, actually. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things, there in verse 3, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Isn't that good to know? That he was there in the very beginning. The he that we're making reference to is Jesus the Christ. In the very beginning with God. Then you drop down to verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father full of grace. Full of grace now, the Bible tells us, and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. Amen. John, again, being the forerunner of Jesus Christ, being the cousin of Jesus Christ. I'm not the one. 
There's someone that's coming after me. You know, people say that today that, you know, Jesus is not the one in which we should be following because there was someone that came after him. No. Yeah, many people were born after Jesus was born, but Jesus is the one that we need to trust in. Jesus Amen. is the one that we have salvation in, Amen. not man. And John pointed that out, that I am not the one. There's someone coming after me. Verse 16. Verse 16. For from his fullness we have all received Grace upon grace. Now we talk about grace. And we ask the question, what is grace? And the simple answer is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. But you know what God has done to those that have been obedient unto him? He's given it to us. Man. He's given it to us. And you have to be in Christ now. We're not talking about the rain. We're talking about grace. We're talking about something that, that God offers freely for us. We have, to, we have to receive that grace. And know again that there is a God and we need to trust in him with our whole being. It's just that simple. But men make it complicated. They know there has to be something else. There's no way that it can be that easy. Verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. No one has ever seen God. The only God. Who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Amen. Let's read that again. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. John didn't change anything that he was saying from verse 1 up until now. He's telling us who God is, He's telling us who Jesus is, and He's telling us that there are two separate beings. One has made known the other. And we should appreciate that. Because without knowing who God is, we cannot be obedient unto what has been done. So we, again, we talk about who Jesus Christ is. We talk about what he came to, to this earth to do. We talk about what he has done. And we accept those things yeah, there are questions we want, we want answers to. But we accept those things and we continue as we think, think about gaining knowledge. That's what God wants us to have. You know, we, we read where Jesus shared everything with his friends. God has given us everything that he wants us to have in, in order for us to know that he is God and how he wants us to live. So we go to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. And we start with verse 36. Jeremiah 32, verse 36. Now therefore, thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city of which you say, it is given into the hand of the king of Babylon by sword, by famine, and by pestilence. Behold, I, I, I will gather them from all the countries to which I drove them in my anger and my wrath. And in great indignation, I will bring them back to this place and I will make them dwell in safety. Now, when you see where he says, I will make them dwell in safety, it's not said that he's gonna put them in a direction in which they have no control over going over. He just said, they're going to be okay. 
in safety. They're going to dwell in safety. Now, knowing that when the children of Israel, God allowed other nations to come in and take them into captivity. And even with that, they were still safe. They were just waiting on, on that time. Or should I say God was just waiting on that time for them to act the way they need to act in order for them to be free and to be obedient unto him once again. And he says there, continue, and they shall be my people and I shall be their God. I will give them one heart and one way and that they may fear me forever for their own for their own good and the good of their children after them i will make with them an everlasting covenant that i will not turn away from doing good to them that they may not turn from me I will rejoice in doing them good and, and I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul. Is that not a God that loves his children? Amen. All the disobedience that they have done, I, he said, I still love you. But here's what I need for you to do. I need for you to love me in return. And you know, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's the same with God, because who is he? He's God. He's not speaking any things of his own. He's speaking what the Father told him to speak, the words in which the Father gave him. So, you shall be my people, and I shall be your God. Obedience is what it's all about. So God desires to bless his children, to give them what they need in order to survive, in order for them to be protected. And as we do our children, we, we give them the protection in which they need. We, we shelter them from the, we, or shall I say, we want to shelter them from the things of the world, but they need to stay in the safety of the home in order to be protected. Amen. Mama's daddy tell you not to go outside and when you get home from school, and what do you do? Be home at five o'clock. You go outside and, and, and mom and daddy come home and you're sitting there crying. You're sitting there with an ice pack on your eye. And they say, What happened? Well, I went outside and, and the little boy down the street beat me up. I told you not to go outside. You, you were protected. Do we listen? We don't listen. We do what we want to do. But if we are truly of God and we truly want to do the things that are right, we will listen to his word and we'll be obedient. And in Isaiah 56, Isaiah 56, starting with the first verse. Thus said the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Blessed is the man who, who does this and the son of the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people and let not the church say, behold, uh, the eunuch, I'm sorry, the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Why? Why is he said, Do not allow these individuals to do these things? See, we know that when we talk about eunuchs, some of uh, eunuchs from birth and, and some became eunuchs for the service of the Lord. Don't, don't, don't go back and say, I'm, I'm a dry tree because you're still useful. The eunuch we read about in Acts chapter 8 was still useful. He obeyed the gospel, went away rejoicing. What do you think he did when he got back home? You think he kept that to himself? No. Pretty sure he shared the truth, just like we share the truth. We share the things in which we enjoy, the things that have come in about in our lives. We share with others. God offers salvation to all mankind. 
You know, yes, the children of Israel were his chosen people, but we are. We are now part of the family of God, being Gentiles, because we were obe obedient unto what he wanted us to do, what he desired for man everywhere to do. And we need to do those things. Again, God desires Amen. to bless his children. God promises to bless my life if I share the good news. If I share the good news. He promises to bless us. Is that true? Yes, it's true. And I want you to understand something as we go through this lesson. One thing you will not see, and I just want to point this out as we go through this lesson. God did never promise us riches, did he? No. I'm talking about that. The money we have in our pocket, brother from out. I just so happen to have these pants on that got two holes in, you know, holes in each pocket. So there's no money in there. That's the front pockets, okay? We were talking about lying the other day, so I texted that's the front pockets. But I want us to know the gospel message is not that you're going to have a fine house over here up on the hill. You're not going to have 10 or 15 cars out in front of your house. You're not, you're not going to have those things. That's not what the gospel message is about. The gospel message is about doing what God wants you to do in order for you to be re reached or receive the things in which he has promised us. Amen. So he promised us to, to bless our lives as we share the gospel message. And the gospel <laughs> message needs to be shared. And as we share it, it, it needs to be obeyed because, again, this is what God won't. Okay? And, and we always want to give God what he wants. Do we not? Yes, we do. Wait, but Butch, you got that? Philemon 1.6. Philemon 1.6. You go with Philippians. <laughs> Philemon 1.6. Listen to the words here. And understand again what a promise is. God doesn't make promises the way man makes promises. Man is slack concerning his promises. He tells you, I promise I'm going to do that. And, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and it never happens. But God has promised us some things. And if God promises us some things, we can rest assured that we are going to receive those things. So we have to do our part. We have to do our part. And if we don't do it, there's no one's fault but our own. And we need to take responsibility of that. So sharing the good news is a responsibility in which each one of us have because of the Great Commission. Bro Brother was talking this morning in class in reference to, I believe it was Brother Denopolis, in reference to the apostles remaining back in Jerusalem when all the rest went out to share the word of God. They, they didn't go out, you know, uh, Oh man, it's time for me to go. No, they were scattered abroad because they were standing on the truth and they wanted to continue to do the things that were right. And when they were scattered abroad, they went everywhere sharing the word of God. Go ahead, Brother Butch. Philemon 1 6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging a very good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Again, it is about Jesus. The things that you share with others. It's God's desire. Matthew chapter 28. That we share the good news. In order that we may not be alone. Yes again. The apostles stayed back. But everyone else was scattered abroad. And yes from time to time. They were joined back together with those individuals. That's a blessing. When, when you see a brother that you haven't seen in a while. And he is still holding truth to the gospel. You are glad to see that individual family. You know, like we go back and we visit family from time to time and we enjoy seeing them. Seeing children of God doing what is right and understand again that it's all because of Jesus. Amen. All because of him. All of these things were made possible because of him. Here we are standing, you're sitting and listening to the gospel message being proclaimed because of Jesus the Christ. What, where else would you be if it wasn't for Jesus? Where would you be if it wasn't for him? Don't tell him. Don't tell him. You know, we, we, some of us got a whole lot in common. We don't even realize it. Heard, heard a man say the other day, and, and looking at him, you wouldn't even think it. He said, if it wasn't for being a Christian, I probably wouldn't be here today. Mm. Never know. The gospel message is for everyone. 
Someone shared that message with, him, with them. And someone shared the message with you and I. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You know, so we, we come together, again, as family, doing the things that are right. We're, we're not by ourselves. We're part of the body of Christ. As Paul writes there, going back to 1 Corinthians 1.10, you know, I beseech you, brother, there will be no divisions among you. No divisions among you. That you all agree and that there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. When family act the way they're supposed to act, they can get along. Amen. When they act the way they're supposed to act. But we look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and let's just go back up and start with verse 1. He says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, you are not yet ready. For if you still, for you are still of the flesh, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh, behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos, and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, as the Lord assigned to each. Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen. He gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. And each will receive his wages according to his labor. Talked a little bit about that this morning, didn't we? If you work 20 hours, you get paid 20 hours. If you work 40, you get 40. We, we're, we're in this thing together. Amen. You plant our water. You plant our water, I plant you water. We, we, we have to be one of the other. We have to do one of the other. We can't sit back and let someone else do all the work. We're one in this. Amen. But he says there, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Well, are we willing to accept this? That we're supposed to share the good news? He, he's going to bless us if we do. Because we're not, we're not alone, you know. Again, there's individuals that say, I'm not going to go and do that Bible study. I can't go do that Bible study. Will you, will you go with me? Yes, I'll go with you. Because we're in this thing together. You know, it's nothing like someone saying something about a member of the body of Christ. That individual's trying to share the gospel with them. And somebody come back and you hear them. They're not necessarily talking to you because they know that they're your brother or your sister. But they're talking loud enough for you to hear them. That person don't know nothing about God's word. We, we, don't, we don't want anyone to say that about anybody here, do we? We're in this thing together. Amen. We can lean on one another. We can glean from one another. And again, that's what God wants us to do. He's blessed us to, to have a family. You, you left mothers, you left fathers, you left sisters and brothers, lands and houses. The Bible talks about those things. But he said, now you have more. Come to me, you have more. More of all, but a father. Because he's our father, and we appreciate him for being our father. For giving us direction. For giving us the growth in which we need in order to be his children and to be able to share the word with others. That's a blessing within itself. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 11. Proverbs 11, verse 11.
10 and 11. Our verse 11, 10 and 11. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there are shouts of gladness. By the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But the mouth of the wicked is overthrown. Again, people look at what you have and they say, you, you are truly blessed. And you, you look back at them and you say, I'm, I'm only doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, we let our light so shine before men that they may see our good work Amen. to glorify the Father who's in heaven. So we never, as we read there in 1 Corinthians, we never want to say, it's all about me. We don't even want to say it's about us at all. It's about God. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm just a mere servant doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's what we need to continue to do. And allow, you know, the work that we do here in this community by sharing God's word, it is, again, it is pointing people to God. I say from time to time, from Cecil back this way, it's a, it's, it's a good land. Hmm. Once you get to Cecil and go back up and down the streets <laughs> over there, it's a bad land. But we're in this thing together. Yeah. We have to make a difference. Man. We have to continue to share the word of God with those individuals over on the corner of Greenwood, whether we want to or not. We have to share the word of God with them. Man. Because that's what God desires. Yeah. The message. He will bless us. We just have to continue to do what we're supposed to do. God promises to bless my life if I study and do his word. Do what we're supposed to do. He promises this. Now, when we look at some of these scriptures, you say, you know, am I really receiving what God has said that he would give me? I was talking to someone the other day, and you, I think I said in class as well, that God you know, a lot of things that we pray for, God don't give them to us because he knows we can't handle them. But these things, we should, we should be able to handle this because there's nothing that, that, that we have to say, hey, he, he giving me a million dollars and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and another. Or he give, gave me this house and I'm going to use it the way I want to use it. No, these things right here are not something that somebody can just put their hand on. These are things that we're looking at that we need to understand that God wants to share with others. Man, His word, okay? The only way that you're going to be able to share his word is by studying his word. And again, he blesses us when we study his word. With that knowledge that we need in order that we may not be ashamed. Proverbs 4, 1. Hear, O sons, a father's instruction and become attentive that you may gain insight. Gain insight. Man was watching me and one of my cousins. We was, we was in this ditch. The ditch was pretty wide. And we was in that ditch and we were throwing bricks at bottles. We were just, just busting them up. He said, hey, y'all come over here. We went over there and he said, sit down, let me talk to you. He's getting ready to give us some instruction. He raised up his pants leg and showed us a, a, a big gash that had been cut out of his leg where the tiller had got to it. He said, what you all are doing over there, you should not be doing. He said, because that glass may come back and it may hit you in the eye or it may cut you somewhere and that's a dangerous thing. So quit doing those things. Do not do those things. You know what we quit doing? We quit throwing bricks and rocks at bottles. And it's sad to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. We quit doing it that day. <laughs> that day. Why? Because someone was watching. We need to listen to instruction. Not just at that moment, but we need to listen to instruction all the time. Because what he was saying was, was some good words. And we, we should, you know, took those words in and, and when we seen the next man doing it, we said, you should not do those things. But when we start talking about the word of God and we start listening to what men have to say about the word of God, 
we should pay attention as well and do things whether someone is looking or whether they're not looking. Hear, O oh sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. Do not. When I was a son with my father tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments, and live. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you remember the first commandment with promise? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your mother and your father, for this is right. For this is the first commandment with a promise that you may live long on the earth. Yeah. Some say there are some that have died at a young age. It happens. It happens. There's others died, you know, in, in childhood and, and, you know, teenage life, early adulthood, and, and some middle age and some old. It happens. But as long as you're living, if you keep the commandments of the Lord, you, you're going to live. And you're going to do the things that are right. And you're going to have some things to look forward to. And most importantly, you're going to have some things to share with others. Because you're studying the word. You're listening to the word. You're doing what is right before him. Psalm 1, verses 1, 2, 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. I, I, love, I love this passage here. But Antonio, Brother Antonio and I and, and his daughter, we used to go to a high school and, and do gang intervention. And this is one of the scriptures that we would use when we would do those things, trying to get the young men and the young ladies to understand that they did not have to follow after the crowd. Now, all they should do is do what God wanted them to do, and things would be all right. And some were afraid to come away from the games because of what would happen to them. We couldn't give them total protection, but we could give them some instruction that if anything happened to them, that they would be okay. Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and his leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Just like a tree planted by the water. Roots run deep. The waters come by and, and, and it washes away the dirt. And, and when you when you ride by sometimes, you say, Man, look at those roots. They're not even on the ground. That tree is still growing. Why? Because there's a root somewhere that is deep. It's called Man. a tap root. A tap root. It, it, it's going down. It's not really looking for water anymore because there's water right there. That tree is just growing, and that's the way we can be. If we would do the things that God wants us to do and stay away from those individuals that are trying to pull us in the wrong direction, keep doing what is right. James chapter 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. You know, you're listening to me today. You're listening to what I'm saying, and I hope that you go back and you look at these scriptures and you say, I need to do what has been said. Because of what James says right here. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. But he does. But he looks. For he looks at himself and goes away and once forgets. At once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law. The law of liberty and perseveres. Being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doings. He will be blessed in his doings. It, isn't that a good thing? That God is going to bless us in the things in which we do? Yes. You know, people say, if you give, God is going to give back to you. Sometimes you give, you don't get. But you're still blessed. 
because you've done what God wanted you to do. Our doing should not, you know, have a come from what the next man is doing. Our doing comes back from what God has told us to do. He told us to study. He told us to grow. He told us to share. And that's what we need to do. We study in order that we may grow and that we may grow, that we may share his word. It's all about his word. Not what man says, but it's what he has said. So if you're here this evening and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, you still confuse or still don't know exactly how to do, how to do that, get with us and we'll study with you. Opening up the word of God, looking at what thus said the Lord, learning more and more about him, and you ask that question that we find in scripture. What must I do in order to be saved? Amen. And then we point that out to you as well. Show you that believing in God's word is necessary. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And believing that Jesus is the Son of God. He came in to give his life in order that we may live. Came to give his life that we may be like him. John 8, 24, except you believe that I'm he, you would die in your sins. You would die in your sins. And you hear all of these things and you say, what, what am I to do now? You know, this is the life I live. I'm a gambler. I'm a whoremonger. I'm a thief. I'm this, that, and the other. Have a change of mind. Say, I don't want to be that anymore. I don't want to live a sinful life anymore knowing that the one that spoke what you're supposed to do and you don't do it, it is sin according to the word of God, James 4, 17. So you quit doing those things. Repent. The Bible teaches that except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. In Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and 5. So what, what, what am I to do now? You know, you, you run around with your colors on. You run around, you know, associating with this person over here or with this group over here. Now we want you to associate with Jesus to Christ. Amen. Make that confession that Jesus is the Son of God. You don't need to be a part of a gang out there. You need to become a part of the family of God. And how do you do that? You do not join. You're added to the family of God, to the body of Christ. You don't have to get jumped in. He's inviting us in. He's inviting you in. But you have to make up in your mind that you want to come in. So not forcing anyone, not twisting any arms, not dragging anyone, but giving you the invitation to come and to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Being immersed in the water and burial baptism. Why? Because baptism is what saves, according to 1 Peter 3, 21. The light figure, word to Baptism does now also save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You need to believe that. You need to be obedient to it. And then study to show yourselves approved unto God and workmen that needed not to be ashamed. That's right. And rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 15. It's important. His word is important. It's not going to change just because a man doesn't like it, it is still going to be the same. How did you become a child of God? What did you do? Here, right here. Same thing they did on the day of Pentecost. Same thing Lydia and her family did. Same thing the Philippian jailer and his family did. Same thing the eunuch did. Same thing Simon the sorcerer did. Same thing those people did there down in Samaria. They heard Jesus being proclaimed, Jesus being preached, and they was obedient unto the gospel, and they were baptized, repented, and was baptized. And we grow. We continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Doing this because this is what is right. So if you want to become one of his children, the opportunity is yours. If you are one of his children, but you have strayed away, you have taken yourself out of the will, come back. Come back home. Repent, confess, and be accepted back. As we stand and see the invitation hymn, we ask you to please come. 229. I heard an old, old story that was saving him from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. 